Let's talk about growth hormones. So what we have here are human growth hormone vials. So what many effects in many tissues. So it's not just growth, but it, it does describe it very generally. It's not just affecting your growth in terms of height. So examples like again, it stimulates cell growth and reproduction. That's why I think I don't know if it's still popular, but I think like maybe in the early tens that Hollywood was obsessed with growth hormone as a fountain of youth. Why? Because they say, oh, it stimulates cell growth. So let's just give these celebrities growth hormones and cause it, say, market it as anti-aging. So that was one reason that it was really popular. I don't know if it's still popular now. But it also stimulates your immune system as well and improves your metabolism and cognitive function. So growth hormone is very important in all of these things. And muscle growth, you might see that in like it's fossil popular as a performance enhancing drug and the growth of many tissues not just muscle growth it also causes the growth of other tissues as well so what happens if you have a abnormal level so the thing about hormones they all have this like normal range of values or normal concentrations of these hormones but what if you have lower than normal levels of ho growth hormones and especially in a developing body so here we have a child and what we see here is that this child knows that she's considerably shorter than her peer. So if you're, you've worked in any, if you've have a, had a child or if you have um, worked anywhere in pediatrics, you may have seen this sort of chart. So it's kind of saying like, okay, is your, your child developing in according towards the st statistical averages for their age group and peer group and sex? So what we see here is that this this individual, she's kind of like a little shorter than average and statistically. So they might pre prescribe growth hormone to get, catch her up to her peers. Now what happens if you have too much growth hormone? So what we see here is that she's way above her peer in this. So yeah, with the deficiency, they might pre prescribe that recombinant growth hormone we see in the previous example. But yeah, what we have here is the growth hormone excess. Now, it's very interesting when you have this growth or hormone excess. And there are two terms, so gigantism and acromegaly. And I want you to know both of these terms. So gigantism is usually reserved as in, what's the difference? Well, they both involve excess growth hormone. But in gigantism, this is pretty much res ex reserved exclusively for pediatrics and children. So this is the excess growth hormones causing these these little the, these children I can't say little but causing these children to kind of like shoot up like weeds and over yeah way above their ter like growing way faster than their peers and they also have elevated levels of this growth hormone now acromegaly is when you have this excess growth hormone into adulthood so what you see is swelling of soft tissue so the interesting thing remember that growth hormone stimulates cell division and replication so soft tissues and connective tissues, these tend to be targeted and stimulated by growth hormone. So the thing, interesting thing, is bone a connective tissue? Yes, it is. And even though it's like it's not soft in terms of like overall density, it does cause growth hormone does cause the stimulate the growth of bone. So what we see is also changes in the skeletal tissue as well. And maxillary widening. And remember, what's your maxilla? Yeah, it's kind of your upper jaw, upper lip, and some of this parts right here. So it kind of the forms a, a, the big majority of your upper jaw. So that's what we have with maxillary widening. And yeah, so notice this guy, he ha has prominent brows. His jaw really protrudes. He has a very long, elongated jaw. And also he has pretty prominent maxilla as well. And here's Sylvester Stallone. Now, what do we see here? Well. This was Sylvester Stallone, I think he was born in 19... was it 46? Yeah, so this was him at 1976 when he was 30 years old. Now, I think it came out in 2006, I think it was Rocky VI or Rocky Balboa, but this was what he looked like then. So he was 60 years old when he was... yeah, so this is him at 60 years old. How many 60 year old guys do you know look like that? Now. He trains like a beast. He showed all the videos of him like deadlifting and squatting and benching all this weight. So he worked hard, but I'm not going to turn this into one of those like is so and so natty or not kind of channels. They, I'll leave it to them. But look at this. Look at his jaw. I mean, look at 
how wide his face is compared to there. Now, I'm not saying he used growth hormones, but it is very interesting the changes you see between those 30 years. I mean, God, I hope I look that rip when I'm 60 years old. But yeah. Oh, Andre the Giant. Oh, people still know Andre the Giant. Yeah, so that's interesting too. If you've seen Andre the Giant, I mean, look how he towers over the other other wrestlers as well. I mean, he was huge, but that was due to, yeah. Yeah, even if you take all this growth hormone, I don't know if you'll get as big as he did. But again, you see those changes in acromegaly with this growth hormone into adulthood. But not only do you see that, you also see growth of internal organs. And this is why it's also very interesting when people use growth hormone as a PED. It's like, look at this guy right here. Now, he barely has any fat right here, right? But notice of what his belly is kind of swollen and distended. So the interesting thing is that growth hormone, it, yeah, it does, does stimulate muscle growth, uh, skeletal muscle growth. But it also stimulates bone growth. It also stimulates growth of your liver and also your intestines as well. So, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not his physician. I don't have CT scans of him. But, I mean, what you don't see is any fat right here, right? Or very minimal fat. So something is back here pushing those abdominal muscles forward, right? And what's behind your abdominal wall? Yeah, your abdominal organs. So if you're causing these internal organs to grow, that's going to push that forward. Yeah, so bloated and whatnot. I mean, he looks pretty dry as well. So, I mean, again, this is all speculation, alleged. I'm not saying this is what's happening, but this is what I'm getting at here is that growth hormone does more than muscle growth. It stimulates multiple tissues and organs to grow. Now prolactin, so again, this is why the like, growth hormone, again, is not doesn't have a third wave of hormones. You have the growth hormone releasing hormone and then growth hormone going straight to the circulation. And as you can see, that they targets many, many different organs and tissues.